Here's some PCH stories, baby. I'm not sure even what kind of music to play on this story. I mean, this is one of those like stranger than fiction. Let me see. I can find something. Got some Harleys in the background, digging my CDs out. All right, this is a story that you're like, I don't know if this is really true, but no, this really happened, dude. What do you think here? Uh, let's go here. I haven't listened to this CD in a long time. We'll see what we got. Sometimes we'll just do it all spontaneity as like, let's see what we got. Okay, this was the time that I went to rehab for 23 hours. Let me tell you that story. I think you can get something out of it. You're like, what? He went to rehab for 23? No, no, no. As a, as a worker. Boom. You're like, I don't know if I believe that. No, really, dude. I went to, okay. So here's the story. You know, um, I, I ran a finance company for 10 years. Um, and, you know, I did pretty good. And then regulation, you know that story. Come on, guys. Keep up. Fuck. And then went to hashtag MRA. And then, boom, here I am. You know, and I'm trying to figure out what the next move is. You know, do I, there's all kinds of things I love to do, you know. And I love to teach. I love photography. I love trading. I love traveling. Boutique hotel. I mean, you know, there's all these, there's all these things I enjoy. It's like, you know, and really... After all that hashtag MRA stuff, I thought, you know, dude, fuck it. I'm gonna, I wanna live by my heart or live through my heart and make decisions that are heart based versus fear based. And you're like, what the fuck is he talking about? I know, I should talk to my family. They're kind of saying the same thing. They're like, what the fuck? We are saying, you know, here's the thing. And then I connected with some family through this process and really kind of doing some old 12 step stuff, making amends. Cause, you know, when you go through heartbreak and grief and, You know, who knows how to navigate grief and it has all kinds of shit and some days are just fucking like, grief's a nigger, huh, man? Dude, grief. You know, even, in fact, just Google C.S. Lewis quotes on grief. I mean, grief is, there's good grief and there's bad grief and there's hala. And I just knew, man, you know, to, to build a company for 10 years and then to have it just kind of dismantled by regulation. I mean, not because because you failed, it's because of regulation. You know, they started putting like liquidity requirements on brokers and at some point you're like, holy shit, man, I gotta be liquid a ton of pala. This 10 year old company's going night night. Boom, they're like, hey bitch, you can just join a big bank. Just bring your shit over here and be a Wells Fargo Bank of America. I'm like, man, dude, why would I wanna go work for a big bank when I built one from scratch? What the fuck, dude? What, boom, and they're like, we don't fucking care, bring you liquidity. So then I wasn't liquid, so I mean, you know, I wasn't liquid like, I think they were wanting like two to 300K, you know, and the way you kind of understand that, just a little background here, because I'm talking about living from your heart. How do we do it in real life? Come on, dude. The obstacles and the resistance that, that we face and all the trials, distresses. You know, I just, one day I said, you know, I gotta live by my heart, through my heart. So I did, and that's kind of, just kind of went to Durango and studied trading, and I, I had my eureka moment, man. It took me, what, 20 years and one solid year of, like, laser-like focus, and I had my trading eureka. And then, at that point, I'm like, okay, well, now what am I going to do? Am I going to continue trading? Am I going to teach? So I thought, you know what I'll do? I'm going to go work at a 12-step facility and see if I can't, you know, because they always say that you always learn more than you you, you teach and you always get more than you give. And so I thought, let me go hang out with the 12-steppers and maybe I can, you know, that was a mistake because, you know, for me, the 12 is kind of a pure thing. You know, it's kind of a spiritual path, but at this 12-step facility in San Diego, it was more of like a, well, it was just kind of, it was like an insurance game, you know, pyramid thing. You know, there was, there was literally like people eating Oreo cookies, watching television, I'm like, no, I can't be a part of this. So I lasted 22 hours, dude. They bounced me, dude. And I understand you got to run a business. But, man, I mean, this was like, fuck, dude. Um, but I got I got something out of that. Um, oh, yeah, like a patient, like, threw shit at me. Not literally shit, but she, like, patient threw, like, anyway. just So that, that was my, I went to rehab for 22 hours. Didn't last. So, so here we go. But I overheard a therapist work with this woman. 
And even though the place was a pyramid scam and I'm literally listening to this therapist do therapy on a woman in the garage. So it's real weird, you know, like, so this, this woman and I was kind of where the, where the quarter, where my quarters were, sort of I could overhear. So we're literally in the garage and trying to like give, you know, the immense amount of privacy and respect to the sacred moment. And the, the sacred moment is this. This woman is literally calling her father for the first time, I think, in her treatment to dis- discuss issues of why that woman was in treatment. And I'm like, holy shit. I mean, I'm trying to make the least amount of noise. I'm trying to like act like I'm not there. But the way they have the quarters, I'm literally living in the garage. So it's crazy. I know. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm like, no, really? This is a true story, dude. But so here I am listening to this and it was this really good therapist I know that therapists kind of get a bad rap but this woman is really good and she uh, called the father and they were kind of on a speaker so there's they're, they were kind of all talking and they so here I'm trying to be like you know I'm overhearing this conversation and holla okay and this is one of those times that I realized like you know I'm gonna just listen and I mean I had no other choice but I think I was supposed to overhear that because I heard the uh, the father and the, the, the dad literally said, um, like on speakerphone, she's like, this, the father asked the therapist, he said, well, why can't she just stop? I think, you know, whatever the problem, drugs, booze, whatever. And, you know, with the father, I'm like, do people literally say that? I mean, I, I didn't know that that, that. Anyway, the dad literally said, well, why, why doesn't she just stop? Like, we're going to, you know, any, but the, he didn't understand addiction. He didn't understand. And then they talked about the woman's self-esteem issues. Again, this woman's completely anonymous. So, she, you know, and that's what she realized. She, she was kind of coming to the table with, like, self-esteem issues. And the dad's trying to, like, just stop. Here's a lot of money. Go to rehab. And anyway. Um, but the... But, the, the father and the therapist did the, the, the therapist did something really really interesting and this is when I realized like even though the place was shit and it was, the therapy was in the garage there was there was a little bit of holla going on there this therapist was helping the dad and the daughter talk about some painful events and the therapist took the role of helping bring the correct memory to the table and I think the the uh, there was an ex-boyfriend and somehow I think the dad didn't like the ex-boyfriend or something and again I'm overhearing this sacred conversation trying not to be there and I thought you know that's such a really cool way uh, that that therapist was trying to help that woman come to the correct memory of the you know boyfriend or whatever and it was really you know interesting how memory and, and, and coming to unity with conflict and saying, well, 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 well th- this is my perspective. What was your perspective? And then to truly be open to that. And the therapist was really trying to say as neutral as possible, but yet kind of trying to act or she was acting as almost like this muse, memory, rehab person. It was really interesting. Oh. What else is Fibon Oji going to come up with? He's like talking about overhearing shit in this San Diego garage therapy place. He laughed at his rehab, his he wine house. I don't know, dude. All right, you guys be good. Maybe you got something out of that story. My pain, your profit, holla. Seriously, next time you go to In N Out, if you're getting anything on this channel, Drop me some in and out. Go to PayPal. You know how to do it. You're like, what? He wants me. Yeah, next time you go to In-N-Out, go to Starbucks. Whatever you spend there, drop me PayPal. and be like, Fibonacci, you brought me some smart You're like $8, $8.58. You're like, that story about your fucking therapist 22 hours. I was, and then you're like, what? What? You're what? Well, I went to that person that I had conflict with and asked their perspective and I gave their perspective space and we were able to come to unity and because that that musy thing memory rehab and sometimes unity can come out of 
Oh, that kind of helped me. I'm like, well, cool, dude. Thanks for the in and out. Thanks for the Starbucks. You guys be good. Email me. 